Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk a little bit about the email system itself, the internet email system, and certain problems with it and why fixing those problems is so hard and why we haven't come up with a good solution, why a lot of proposed solutions just cannot work. Now this comes on the heels of my rant last time about uh, the IP reputation uh, services that uh, don't really handle low volume senders particularly well. Uh, so, but the real problem uh, we have is not so much these reputation systems, they're a symptom of the problem. The problem is the email system itself. Now, it was designed basically back in the day when, but when mo pretty much the only people on the internet were trustworthy and they didn't do uh, nasty things that uh, uh, invoke uh, fancy uh, terms like the tragedy of the commons and so on. But as the internet got more popular and spread out and got more commercial and, and, so, and that sort of thing, well, it, the population using the internet necessarily increased, and as a result, the, eventually the um, same people that uh, abuse shared resources in the physical world came in and started abusing shared resources on the internet. And the, and the criminals came and started sending their scams and so on, uh, just like they'd been doing in the postal mail for decades uh, or longer, uh, centuries actually. And it uh, basically, it was predictable. And we could have, if, if we'd had someone with a little bit of vision in the early days, actually prevented a lot of the abuses that happen now. So what's the problem with internet email? Well, the underlying protocols that handle the email don't have any sort of authentication attached to them. Uh, th and that means that any mail server out there can send mail pretending or purporting to be from any email address, whether that server is authorized to or not. And that does give rise to some significant issues. That was actually necessary to a large extent back in the early times because email actually existed before the internet did. So it, to bridge everything, you had, you had some complications. But along the way, we neglected to build into the internet aspect of things any way to identify who was authorized to send messages for a particular domain. Uh, we did manage to, we had to obviously for, reason, for, for obvious reasons, identify who was supposed to receive the mail destined for a domain. Uh, without that routing information, messages would never get to their destination. But the, the, the servers designated for receiving the mail are not necessarily the same servers that are supposed to be sending it out. In fact, the big operations uh, have different servers for inbound and outbound just due to the uh, resource requirements for handling it all. It, uh, it's just how things scale. But... Uh, even the messages themselves don't have any sort of authentication mechanism built into them. Uh, and, you know, it's, you can add optional things like PGP signing and things like that, and then you can be pretty certain that you're dealing with, with a legitimate message. But that sort of thing never really caught on because it, most of it relies on technology that's confusing for the average person. Even technical people often have trouble understanding things like public key cryptography. And requiring the general public that's just using email to send notes to their buddy to understand all of this and maintain a web of trust and so on it for public keys, that's just ridiculous. Uh, it's not going to happen. And even if people were willing to do that, it cannot scale. 
It doesn't matter how you slice it, it cannot scale. So we need some other mechanism where we can identify that this message coming from this place is probably authorized to represent this domain. Now, we do have some technologies that have come along in the meantime, which do actually help with that. Uh, first off, we have the, the idea of SPF, which basically just uh, is a means of saying, yes, that IP is allowed to send messages claiming to be from that domain. And that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, and, that, it, and it works as far as uh, it goes. But it does trip on another problem. And this is just an outgrowth of the fact that Internet email didn't have any kind of authentication like that in the beginning. And that means when, f when someone is forwarding messages from, say, an old email account to a new one, when it gets forwarded on, the server doing the forwarding doesn't change the message contents or necessarily even the message envelope. And as a result, now you, you're, the forwarding server is sending messages purporting to be from the sender's domain. If that sender is using SPF, has published an SPF record, and the recipient is, is server is, in fact, checking that and honoring it, then the forwarded message will look like it's been forged. When, in fact, it's a legitimate forward on behalf of somebody operating on that server. Now, the obvious solution is that forwarding should rewrite the envelope, just like it would with a, uh, a physical postal mail, the, uh, send, the, the addressing would, uh, th there'd be changes on the envelope and you'd know it was forwarded. But the mail protocols don't allow you to identify that it's being forwarded at the envelope level. So you have to look into the message itself to find out. And here's the problem. The contents of the message that has the routing information in it is in the message headers. And this is where the analogy with postal mail breaks down. Um, and those headers can't be authenticated because they're part of the message. And as a result, you don't know which of those headers are valid. So anybody could write any, anything they want in the message headers, dump it into the mail system, and there you go. And that's one of the things that makes forging email so easy. Uh, now, obviously, if you uh, set up the forwarding system to rewrite the envelope so that it, uh, it now purports to be coming from a domain controlled by that forwarding system and then uh, you can pass it along and it, sh and it should pass the S SPF checks. Uh, unless of course you get somebody abusing SPF and is actually checking the from address in the message against SPF which they specifically should not be doing. Um, so SPF itself is a reasonably good technology, but it tends to break when it comes to email forwarding. Uh, now, but there is a solution to that. The problem is every email forwarder out there has to change what they've been doing. Now, fortunately, it's slowly happening over time and it's getting more toward the point where you can publish an SPF policy of reject anything that doesn't pass instead of saying, anything that doesn't pass, you don't actually know anything. There's other technologies uh, coming out that uh, are intended to uh, authenticate the message itself, identify if it's been tampered with, and identify if it actually originated from the server it purports to. And things like, I think the current one is DMARC. Um, and that uh, looks like uh, it's promising. Unfortunately, it's fairly hard to implement for on a lot of mail servers still these days. Um, and as a result, many server operators have not implemented it yet. Uh, I know it's on my to-do list for my uh, server operation that I operate for my day job. 
uh, but I haven't got it quite working yet because it's actually a hell of a lot more complicated to get it working than you would expect. And that's partly because the uh, mail server technologies haven't quite caught up with it. Uh, that said, uh, it does leverage some uh, the some infrastructure we already have out there. Uh, just like SPF uses a DNS record, uh, DMARC also uses DNS records to uh, publish uh, information, public information, so that uh, remote systems can actually query it and find out something. And this is this is actually quite good, and it's quite clever. Um, and, and, and one of the things about uh, DMARC, uh, as I understand it, is that it doesn't uh, it doesn't break forwarding any more than SPF does, and SPF is actually uh, part of uh, setting up DMARC properly. So it does uh, it does improve things. The problem is it requires everybody to actually implement it before it starts to, or a large fraction to, to implement it, and a large fraction to start checking it. Uh, before it starts to uh, really make a difference. Uh, fortunately, it's starting to get around that curve, but it's still a lot of work, and the smaller server operators are, are having trouble with it because the software they can afford doesn't implement it, and the uh, documentation how to do it either assumes uh, facts not in evidence, uh, that is, that you somehow magically know things, or it assumes that you all... Here's the thing, uh, a lot of technical explanations on how to do things pretty much assume you already know how to do it. Um, and that's what a lot of this information this it falls into. The, it falls into this trap of assuming that you already know the specs inside out and upside down when you're trying to implement it, when uh, for the most part, you've, you, you don't need to know the details of the specs. You just need to implement it. Uh, and, the, and it's really a problem of getting it to implement correctly. Now, um, there are things that have been proposed other than these technologies that I've just talked about. Uh, and wingnuts come out of the woodwork uh, during discussions of massive incursions and so on all the time talking about things like this. Uh, there's been talk you know, about e-postage, where you have to pay some amount to send every message out. Well, that's not going to work. The only reason postal mail postage works is because you've got a pretty much a monopoly on postal mail, and you've got a relatively small number of courier operators who aren't going to do anything until you pay them, right? Uh, they're not going to deliver your packages if you don't pay them. Uh, on the internet, though, absolutely everybody is their own courier company. And there's no one central authority where all the messages clear through, and there isn't even a small oligopoly that controls all of it. Uh, anybody can run a mail server and send email to anybody else on the internet as long as they follow the protocols. And as a result of that, there's no central authority that can collect postage. So e-stamps, they can't work. And if, if uh, any, say, large providers uh, like uh, Google or somebody started requiring it, they'd have a massive backlash because the other large providers would say, no, you pay up. And it's not going to happen. So fortunately, we have enough large email providers that the standoff on that will pretty much prevent it from being an issue. Um, there's been other things. Uh, another thing that I've seen proposed is that uh, you have to register your mail server somehow before you're allowed to send mail on the Internet. Uh, the problem with that is you need a central registry, and who's going to do, who's who's going to trust anyone to run that? Uh, domain registries are bad enough, and the only reason we have those is because we have to have uniqueness in the domains. Um, you can't have two people using the same domain; it just would cause trouble. Uh, so we put up with these registries for domains and registering domains. But if we've registered a domain, 
why the blazes do we need to register a mail server on top of that to send mail? Uh, that, you know, like why we have, because any registry is going to necessarily at some point start charging fees to maintain the registry. Uh, that's just how registries work. They end up charging fees. It, it always happens. So uh, we can't realistically implement uh, a, an email system where uh, a message coming from uh, a server that's not registered with somebody, some central authority, doesn't accept mail. And if you take it that one step further, that where you have to set up, say, a bilateral arrangement between you and a uh, email provider before they'll take mail from you, well, that's not going to work either because setting up that number of bilateral arrangements and and that sort of thing would simply not scale. Uh, if you take a look now, there's probably already millions of email server operators out there, and if everybody it wanted to send send everything to everybody else. That's a million factorial, uh, roughly a million factorial uh, relationships. That's not gonna work, and and simple math shows you that it can't work, right? Um, it's actually half of a million factorial when you get down to it. But uh, if I have my uh, uh, combinatorics right. But half of a million factorial might as well be a million factorial. They're both ridiculously large numbers. Um, so it, we're, there, there's no point even uh, considering uh, that, yeah, but you divide it by two, it'll be a lot better. No, it won't. And uh, do the math and you, you'll see. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's it, it won't work if you have to do peering arrangements to send mail. That just cannot work at the scale of the internet. Uh, so anyone suggesting that, or anything resembling that, is smoking crack, and uh, they really need to put the crack pipe down and back away slowly. It cannot work. And so there, there's been things like that. And even if that did work, even if it could work, it wouldn't stop the junk mail spews and the Joe jobs and so on. Um, the, uh, you know, even SPF and DMARC won't stop the junk spew. Uh, obviously, the spammers will uh, happily uh, set up SPF records for their sending domains, or they actually compromise the accounts, legitimate email accounts, and then send through the legitimate email server for that domain and use that user's email address as the from address. So it's not going to stop the junk, but it will, at least SPF and DMARC and that stuff, will give some way of authenticating that the message came from an authorized server. Uh, and that. Uh, will allow uh, forgery detection to be a lot more effective. And at the very least, that will make shutting down the bad sources easier. Uh, so uh, it's certainly worth using technologies to fix the forgery problem that's uh, built into the internet email system. Uh, but it should be clear that the uh, solving the forgery problem does not solve the spam problem. It just means the spammers have to play by different rules and they have to work at it a little more to make it happen. And it, you know, it might stop a bunch of junk initially, but it won't in the long run. The scammers will still send out their scams. The uh, spammers will still send out their spam. It's, it's just going to work that way. Uh, but at least with SPF and DMARC or some other technology that uh, authenticates mail servers or what have you, it will improve the accountability at least and will be able to know where things are really coming from. Potentially. Um, 
Now, do I think the uh, current email system as it is is hopelessly broken? Well, no, I don't. Um, some of the things that we've been trying to do to improve things, like um, reputation based on uh, IP address and things like that, are going to fall apart really badly when IP version 6 finally gets some real, real global deployment. Uh, which looks like it's any day now, um, TM, uh, which means it could be any time in the next 10 years. Uh, but it looks like uh, that when that comes along, some of these things are just going to fail. Uh, because when you, when you go to... to um, uh, well, when you multiply the number of bits by 4... Uh, you know, we're, we're raising the number of possible addresses by uh, 2 to the power of, what is it, 96. Um, so uh, anything that's based on individual IP addresses is destined to fail. Um, anyway, uh, the, um, the fun part there is that uh, I think... Uh, I think actually uh, we're on the right track with the SPF DMARC thing uh, for authentication of mail sources. And I think that will force some improvements in how mail forwarding is handled. And once we do that, we'll have a much better, stabler email system. But it'll take a while for that stuff to get deployed properly. And, you know, eventually it will. Uh, other things have been deployed over time as well. The, our problem right now is we need to deploy this stuff without breaking existing things too badly. Uh, those of us that actually are selling services can't afford to have things just stop because uh, uh, we can't just say to our customers, well, what you're doing is, uh, is not supported by the internet anymore because they'll just go to another provider who is supporting it. So we need to make sure that reasonable operations still work as expected. And that's partly what's slowing down my deployment of things like DMARC as well, is I have to somehow do it without breaking the system. So I think we're probably on the right track on the authentication and handling the forgery problem. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to solve the junk mail problem. Uh, we haven't solved it for postal mail for Pete's sake. So. Uh, if we haven't so solved it for postal mail, which has been around for centuries uh, in one form or another, then I fail to see how we're going to solve it completely for electronic mail. Um, fortunately, uh, I think uh, once we solve some of the, uh, repu the um, not reputation, the uh, forgery issues, uh, we'll be able to at least trace the sources and identify whose account has been compromised uh, when we uh, when something happens. So, uh, you know, I think things are, are improving. Uh, but there's just no possible way we can prevent compromised credentials or anything like that from, uh, from causing trouble. And it's just the way of the world. Now, I think I might have gone a little bit off what I said right at the beginning. Um, uh, it, it's pretty clear that uh, the biggest problems with the underlying email system are solvable. Um, the junk mail problem itself actually isn't. And I think because IP version 6 is coming, IP-based reputation systems are probably not going to last terribly long. Uh, in that world because it's there's just so many IPs. I, I just don't think it's going to be practical to do that. Unfortunately, what they get replaced with is probably going to have much more collateral damage and hopefully it doesn't turn out to be uh, a massive problem that just causes people to go back to IP version 4 for mail servers. But anyway, I, I could ramble on and waffle around on things like this for at length. I'm not going to. But basically, um, hopefully uh, what I've said uh, this time around gives you some insight into the, uh, 
uh, email system and and how it's not really quite as simple as you might think it is uh, under the hood. And there's lots of complicated things going on. Uh, and those complicated things are, you know, basically we're trying to make things happen by a massive consensus uh, across the world and well, quite frankly, people just don't agree on things and that's really hampering deployment of any real solution to a lot of these things. And it's taking big mail providers like Yahoo and Google to force change. Uh, until they came along and started forcing change, uh, nothing uh, was actually happening. Nothing was actually getting traction. Until they started using things like SPF, it wasn't getting traction. But now it finally is. So hopefully things will improve steadily over time and uh, in 10 or 15 or 20 years, the email system will be a better better operation, a stabler situation with less um, pie in the sky, academic trust baked into it, you know, that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, that's uh, as much as I'm going to ramble about on this topic for now. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, be sure to subscribe. But if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.